Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine is Serious Business, episode 214. Heading into the new year, we had a good episode with some champagnes last week. This year we're going to try and be a little more structured. I really want to get to the samples as we get them. We want to do, do more that? interviews. We've got some really great opportunities for interviews lined up. Thanks to everybody who watches and respects the show. I really want to say that we're benefiting that as we move from the new move into the new year because like we've got more interviews available than we can take advantage of. So thanks to all of you who are willing to do that, and we hope to seize more of them as 2014 progresses. Yes, and thanks for all the new likes and new, on Facebook and the new subscriptions. This is great to have. Uh, yeah, just tells us that. So we're tonight we're getting right, into so. some samples that we really need to. Um, Janelle uh, works for Trellis. Uh, it's a it's a PR company. She's been in touch with us. Some really great offers. She offered to send us some samples. Yeah, let's go right. the first one. Okay. Start with this one? Um, yep, start with that one. Okay. From uh, Selena Estates, Highland Vineyards. Um, wine made by uh, Laurent Montelou, one of the big players in the Oregon wine scene for a long time, but not somebody we've really been closely in touch with. We've had a few yeah. of their wines, had a couple on the show in the past. She offered to send us some samples. And we're like, okay, yeah, that's cool. We'll check out a couple wines. We get a box full of amazing wines, including some of the stuff from the top end of their lineup. Tasted through everything that was sent to us tonight, and uh, the, the top few wines really showed well, and we, we would like to share our thoughts with you guys. So right. thanks, Janelle, for sending these our way. It's fantastic stuff. It yeah, very, very appreciated. So on, on the plate, we got a bunch of 2011s, or yep. three 2011s and one 2010. So the first wine to start is the Selena 2011 Pinot Noir Domaine Daniel Lorraine. Yep. Um, this was, uh, the, the estate, they talk about it being a wedding gift between the couple. Um, it's now a uh, 20-acre estate, was biodynamically farmed since the second leaf, and uh, it's adjacent to the uh, Shea Vineyard, so one of the most famous vineyards in Oregon. Yamhill Carlton, yes. kind of known for the dark Huge. Fruit, black earth. Yep. Um, yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Check it out. Clear color in the glass, a lot, reminiscent of a lot of 2011s, right? See right through it. On the nose, I wouldn't guess 2011. There's definitely some dark fruits that kind of imply more ripeness and uh, some cola scents. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not like super sweet, but kind of like that spicy cola side, or maybe if you get some of that like hippie, hippie cola, more er more the herbal end of that. Almost like sarsaparilla. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Edging in that direction, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I do get components of red tea with it as well, and mm -hmm. obvious cherry components. Those are there. Um, it smells nice. Yeah. Yeah. It smells very good. Really nice consistency on the palate. Like totally, it's definitely like a more medium light-bodied wine, but just really balanced. Very, very well. Uh, yeah, just, just sits very nice in the palate. And you're gonna find us saying this a lot. We pre-tasted all of these, but the uh, the acidity on all of them is really full, and it plays well with both of our palates, yep. especially coming from you know a Yamhill Carlton Vineyard. And if it's adjacent to Shea, it's probably one of the, the warmer sites in the valley too. Um, kind of tendency to maybe be too ripe in hotter years. In 2011, not a problem at all. Nice, nope. crisp. Tight package here with really good flavors. Totally. Yeah, and the flavors here are very nice. I mean, I've got some dark cherries, some pomegranate flavors, a little bit of the red tea that I'm kind of getting. Like, the cola definitely does play a little bit in the palate. I really here. like the tea on the palate. Um, so you're, you're dead on there. Uh, and, but, but like you were saying about the acidity, the acidity and the tannins on this wine are both in a really nice place, really well balanced. Um, it drinks wonderfully. Like, it's sort of what we like about 2011. So I was actually going to look at the I get a little bit of the so, like wow. the cherry skin along with those tannins. The tannins, like you said, they just don't get too heavy. There's just a little bit of structure there. And there's kind of like a smooth sense of the fruit that lingers. Not too long, things definitely dry up as it progresses through the finish. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a good sense of fruit that like sticks around underneath the acidity and persists a little bit, which I dig. Totally. And surprising about the alcohol content in this, based on the, the way the structure and the way that the, the body is with the wine, I would say low 13s or even like high 12s, sure. 13.7. Okay. Another surprising turn of events. I mean, or yeah. in pre-tasting these, and, and, and really well done. I mean, this uh, it comes across the palate. There's, there's no alcohol heat coming through, at least for me at all. So. 89 plus for me, solid wine. Yeah, 90, 90 for me. Uh, really delicious. I think delivers at its price point, $50, yep, $45. Yep, $50, um, yep. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a delicious wine. So wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. steer clear of that at all. Okay. So this, the second one we have is the Highland Estate 2010 Pinot Noir. So I guess it's just Highland fruit. Yeah, from, from the Highland Vineyard. So, so it's a, kind of a historic vineyard in the valley. Um, been around for a long time. I was familiar with it before, uh, before they bought it out. Now they're the, uh, the, the sole owners of the Highland Vineyard. 
Um, and oh, my okay. original exposure to it was through the Rieslings. They had some old Riesling plantings. Okay. It was also pretty big, had a lot of Pinot Noir, but they bought it out and they do a Highland bottling of the Salino label and they also do a Highland Estates bottling now too. Wow. So yeah, so so that was news to me and I was I was really excited to try these wines because I haven't had them yet. Alright, so this is the only 2010 we have in the lineup. Yep. Um, should be a little more progressed than the 2011s. 2011s are definitely sure. showing a little more structure, but we'll see. Price wise this is uh, this is about thirty five, so this is the it's the lowest price, yeah, the lowest price of the of the four we're doing today. But still, ultimately a single vineyard Pinot. Right? Definitely, yep. And and, uh, and a single vineyard with some history too. Yeah. Good point. Funk, funky nose here, like uh, definitely more like the funky mushroomy, a little bit earthy components, but definitely like some cherry fruit. Mm -hmm. I get like strawberries with the seeds attached to it, and yeah. the pomegranate you're talking about on the palate here. I'm definitely getting some of that on the nose. It smells good, another one, but this is definitely more on the earthy components, a little more mushroomy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe even like a little like the dirty truffle, like you still got the tr dirt on it. Did you a little touch of it, sure. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I can see that. I don't think I'd say it myself, but it makes sense. Yeah. McMinnville ABA, for those of you who right. were tuned into that. Man, the structure is in a really nice place right now. Um, and the fruit has this bright freshness to it. Uh, right. Which, you know, we were talking about this being a little more evolved. I can kind of see it being 2010 from the bright fruit, but it's not showing any age at all. No. Um, no, absolutely not. A um, yeah. little bit of integration, actually. The time served as well. I bet this tastes better now than it did the day it was released. Absolutely. Um, there's better, better integration between the fruit and the structure here. The acidity is in a really nice place. Tannins are in a really nice place. Mm. It is drinking. It's drinking very well. So, Man. Where it's really getting to me is there's a, the fruit is really integrated on the mid palate. It's smooth and still really fresh. The acidity is really nice, and it's got this great combination, I think, of apple flavors and really fresh cherry flavors um, that work really well together. Kind of on the finish, the acidity gets pretty full. I'm getting maybe just a touch of lime peel in with the limes, a little bit of green apples on the acidity that clean things up, uh, but that really nice ripe fruit lingers underneath. Right. I was, I was, I was going to say, like, it, it's sort of boggling my mind in that sense that I'm getting flavors in this Pinot that I don't typically get in Pinots. Like there's some of the almost like sour apple thing going on in the finish, right? Like, it's what like do you associate that with? Usually? Like like riper cherries and it, it's more I sort of start to think of like grapefruity or okay, yeah, or, totally, uh, totally. You know, when you start to edge in those tart flavors, but this is is edging more towards apples for me, or like underripe mm -hmm. apples. And uh, in that sense, it's very very nice. And, and the struck and the acidity does come in very strong on the finish. It definitely as I'm having more sips, it's like. Fuller and fuller, but uh, not for everybody. Right, works for me. Yeah, and, and I, I, I'm enjoying it actually yeah. very much. So, um, yeah, very nice one. Yeah, 90 points for me. Um, this is in a really good place. The mid palate, I think, really stands out to me. And at 35 bucks, I think if you could still get your hands on it as a 2010, definitely worth checking out. Totally. Um, man, this has improved since I tasted and I wrote my note on it. Mm -hmm. 89 plus for me, or 89 points. Uh, really delicious wine. So, yeah, yeah, a little bit of trade on the last one. We're moving kind of fast because we decided to do four wines. We just couldn't figure out which one of these to drop. Normally we try and keep it to three, but uh, this is the Highland. Okay, so this is the Highland Vineyard bottling under the Salina label. From 2011. Yep. So as, as we're going forward, we're only going only to have 11s with these two. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So same vineyard as the last one and the same vineyard as the next one. What? Feeling good? Pour me some big rinse. Ah, well. Oh. I'll, get, I'll get you the rinse on the next one. I'll get you a nice. Uh... Well, no, I don't want you to. Uh, whatever. Any off camera pours? That's pretty nice. All right. Jammy jam. Yeah, we got, a, we got a whole audience today. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think I just did the first damage to Chaz's white carpet just now. Did you? Too, I think. But uh, drip, drop, dripping, if you will. Yeah, I got white. I, I ended up in an apartment with white carpet. Yep. I, cur I cussed when I first walked in. Yeah, anyway, for a wine drinker, that's a big risk. That's a big risk. Okay. 2011 so. Highland Vineyard from Selena. Mm -hmm. Great complexity on the nose, jumping right out of the glass. There's kind of a lot of intensity here um, that I haven't experienced out of a lot of 2011s. Um, you know, they're getting, you know, the 12s are starting to come out, so the 11s, kind of the more mature 11s are really showing up on the market. Yeah. Um, 
but they're still on the younger side. This definitely is showing more maturity on the nose right away. There's more intensity. There, there's for for talking about lemons in general. There's great intensity of fruit here, which doesn't happen a lot of times. But there's also uh, you get some of the red tea components, a little bit of the earthy components as totally. well. Um, some of that Oregon funk I like to talk about. It is there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. definitely there. Um, the barnyardy sort of forest floor thing. Um, I'm yeah, getting some cloves along with like dark mm. cherries and skins, but the real takeaway here is actually yeah, there's yeah, a lot of there is there is some great yeah. complexity on the nose here already. Yeah. Totally, this is this is yeah, it smells wonderful. So, mm. starts out really clean. I'm gonna stick with the cloves; they show up on the mid palate. Um, the tannins give a little bit of a dusty feel moving late. Um, and, and this doesn't have quite like the fruity core that this one does, no. but the fruit flavors are there and I'm getting more like raspberries, like lighter strawberries kind of playing with the structure. Mm. And I would agree with that. Yeah, sometimes we just hit this where it's like I can't really say much more. Um, I would agree with that. There's maybe not the intensity of fruit, but there is some really good fruit flavors there in general. Um, Definitely edging towards the raspberry because the way that it progresses through the finish is just like all tart red fruit. Are you eating that? Like it's almost like chalky. Like it's just very acidic. The tannins have got a chalky feel to them, and the way that they progress is really nice. Like I like the intensity here a lot. Like it's sort of medium bodied, medium intensity, well balanced. I'm getting a touch of pepper on the mid palate, but where this really takes things up a notch for me is that uh, while I have that experience, I'm also getting like this. Uh, layer of like cherry skins that just sits on my tongue while the acidity is kind of working through the rest of my mouth. You've probably had that when you're eating cherries or blueberries. Sometimes you get a little bit of the peel like stuck on your teeth or kind of stuck on your tongue and it kind of uh, contributes flavor to future bites and I'm getting that experience as the acidity is cleaning out the rest of my mouth here uh, which gives some some complexity that's really kind of exciting for me. Um, everything's really coming together here nicely I think. Um, I have this problem where I listen to Dan talk and I forget what I was going to say. No, that's okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep talking for a little bit. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, it's a, the, the skins thing is definitely sticking out to me. Like, more cherries, but like I'm sort of thinking of like, the pe pinot grapes. Like, uh, yeah. the, eating, them, eating them off when, the vine. When you eat them off the vine when they're ripe, this, this tannic grip sort of starts to stick in the, in the sides of your mouth when, after you eat Especially quite you chew a few the seeds too much? I always do. Yeah, I just gotta, are they ripe or are they not ripe, mm -hmm. right? You gotta know. So, um. I'm getting a lot of that feel there, and, and like the the way that the fruit is still very intense and still talking to you on your palate while you're while it's drying your mouth completely out is very nice. I like that, I like that combination. So yeah. very cool. Uh, boy, I'm really enjoying the experience right now. I, I think I'm gonna bump it up even from what I, what I was tasting before. Yeah, 92 right now. I'm 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 really enjoying this. Good complexity, great nose. It all works really well together. Um, yeah, fantastic stuff. I, I would enjoy drinking quite a bit more of this. In the pre-tasting, this was my favorite, and it's definitely even improved from then. Like that, the, the structures come around amazingly. So, uh, 91 plus for me, 90 nice. points right in there. It's it's a wonderful bottle of wine. It's in a great spot, and, yeah. and actually, without question, the best uh, the best wine under the Salina label I've ever had, too. Totally right. So yeah, so I so agree. thanks for Thank taking the time to send us this. the samples because yeah. this is something that. You know, it, it's at a price point that it's, a, it's kind of a challenge for us to try regularly. And, uh, and, and I really appreciate having this experience because it definitely, you know, I'm much more turned on to kind of, so kind of what's wines, going on in the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So for the last wine, we have the, the Highland Estates. So this is back to the Highland label. 2011 Pinot Noir Curie? Curie? Curie. 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 Okay. So what this says is this basically just from the Highland, Highland Vineyard. This is uh, block selection and barrel selection. Yep, and and Charles Curry was one of the one of the original Oregon pioneers. Uh, planted, you know, a lot of the really early vineyards. It said that he brought in some clones from Alsace and had them approved, and that's what this wine is made entirely of. Is oh. just like yeah, the Curry clone um, that that he brought into the states. So I, I think that might be in the sheet over here. Okay, but no, it says it. Charles okay. says the Curry clone is shrouded in mystery. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's yeah. a lot of like. Where did the grapes come from? But yeah. but you know there, there's some history behind it. Um, still from the Highland Vineyard, as the name suggests. Um, so yeah, there right. we go. 
It smells delicious. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely more of a fruity nose. Yep, a little more perfume too. I'm getting a little more like floral yeah. components here. Kind of, I think when I wrote my original note, I was thinking hibiscus. They've mellowed out a little bit. I'm feeling more like roses at this point. Yeah, dried roses. Almost a little bit of potpourri thing going on. A little bit, but not like the real like, in contrast, not not so much like clovey or anise no, or so much. No, no, it's no. more gentle potpourri. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like strawberries, ripe cherries. It smells great. So A little bit of earth. Ooh, a little bit of black earth minerality going on here. Hmm. It's delicious. Yeah. yeah. Um, structure shows up right away, but never gets too full. And this is kind of an interesting experience for me. I haven't had a whole lot of this where mm -hmm. the, the tannins sit on the uh, front of the palate and slowly evolve across while the uh, fruit more works on the back and on the sides. I would agree with that. that. Okay. No, I would agree yeah. with that. Um, and because of that, you can't really call the tannins full because they don't they don't sit there and dry out the entire mouth, right? Like, no. Nope. Yeah, your tongue has a lot of time to experience the fruit flavors, and which are definitely on the softer side. Like you've got some sort of older older strawberries, ripe cherries. None of it really has a tart edge, and leading into Not the finish, tart, right? Nope. Like, there's good ripeness still left over, and like the flavors are really pleasing and really easy to understand. Not to imply any shortage of acidity, it's still there. No, no. But the uh, I think the structure, in contrast to the previous three, is more tannic driven, without being too strong in that direction. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I like the way the fruit progresses on this one a lot. Just it's a lot more subtle. I think it doesn't turn apart. Yeah, like yeah, it definitely is, and and. Uh, I just like that it doesn't like a lot of times they close up or they turn really tart on the finish, and you, and while I still understand fruit flavors in that spectrum, I really like that this is just gentle, nice, ripe fruit, but with with really good structure and yeah. And I feel it's a little more intellectual too. Um, it's it's ten bucks more, uh, but I, I but I think it shows. So you get that structure, you get that interplay of fruit on the mid palate right away. I don't think you really get the good stuff out of this wine unless you kind of take it slow and think about it because I really like how the fruit runs out mm -hmm. on the palate here. I think the uh, there's like these like gentle cherry, maybe a hint of strawberry flavors that run a lot later than either of these other three do, uh, but they're kind of subdued. You have to be thinking about them. You have to be looking for them. You know, and if you're eating them with a the big dessert or if you've got like a lamb dish or something like that, I bet you'll miss them and it'll just kind of totally. feel like a yeah. tannic wine with kind of a short finish. But there's good stuff there if you're willing to like kind of like dive into it and think about it. I think it's got good enough intensity to, to outlast some meals. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely think if you stick it with like a more forward meat dish, that, that some things might be lost here. Obviously, obvious subtleties would be, but uh, I think it's got good enough intensity to, to to stand up to a lot of dishes. Anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah a little difference of opinion. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, just just with the fruit. Um, right in line with how I pre-tasted it, 90 points. I think it's a delicious wine. Um, with good interest and, and uh, whoa, so close. Good yeah. job. Yeah, no, it was delicious. It's good. Um, yeah, ni ninety-one for me. That that little bit of uh, complexity on the finish is really exciting for mm -hmm. me. I'm really feeling it. Feeling it's it a little really bit less than I did earlier, um, but I think wow. following this with that, which had a little more fruit, kind of punch to it, maybe holding it back a little bit. Anyway, ninety-one Absolutely. still pretty exciting. Good complexity. Um, more fantastic wines that we, we wouldn't have a, had a chance to experience otherwise. So thanks, uh, you know, to Selena, Highland Estate, yes. Montelou, uh, Janelle. 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 Yeah. Thanks for sending us these wines. This was a great experience. It was really nice to get to taste all these side by side. I mean, I think all of them suffer a little bit when they're side by side because they all have to fight each other. But there's, there's some fantastic wines in here. It was great to try them all. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think it's still like a, a more complete picture of what, what the uh, style has to offer. That's a good point. And, and, I, and I will say, I, I guess we'll, we'll speak to that a little bit too, so all of these made by the same winemaker. I'll say that there's a tannic element to the, like the tannin is present, but not overwhelming in any of the bottles we tried. There are a handful right. of bottles we chose Great tannins not to do on the, the show, board. but they're right. all there, um, and, and none of them where I like, oh, this is too heavy. Which, no, which happens to me. Semi-regularly, Yeah, actually. we're both pretty sensitive to that. So. Yeah, and, and very well done. So, so we'll see. So thanks again. Um, question question of, the of the day. This kind of leads to something pretty easy, I think. When was the last time you were surprised by the quality of something that you hadn't had much exposure to? I think everybody's had mm -hmm. that. Ex everybody has that experience every six months or so. Totally. Let us know what you think. I mean, you're, you're, sitting, you're sitting in front of ours right now. So... Uh, 
We don't need to answer this. We well, just, no, but I'm, I'm just trying to think of one. But I can't yeah. right off the top of my no, head. We, we yeah. got it right here. That's we actually a really great point. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to answer it. You guys do. Um, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Later, guys. Bye.